Welcome to AM Best Audio. While insurance professionals typically don't get to choose their results, they do, however, get to select their habits, which determine those results. According to the book, The Salesperson's Guide to Growing a Business, Lessons from the Benefits and Insurance Industry to Drive Your Growth. I'm Lori Chortis for AMBEST TV. And joining us now to discuss that and other strategies insurance professionals need to create a successful, profitable business are the co-authors of the book, Kevin Trokey, a founding partner and coach, and Wendy Kniep, a partner, both with Q4 Intelligence. Wendy and Kevin, it's great to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having us, Lori. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Lori. Appreciate being here. Kevin, can you tell us about your book and how the idea for it came about? Yeah, absolutely, Lori. We we are a very accidental industry. There are very few of us that grew up with the goal and the aspiration of getting into insurance. We arrive here accidentally, but once we get here, we tend to love it. And in fact, tend to stick around. And many of those go on to be accidental business owners. They probably started off selling for somebody else, decided to go out on their own, hired a couple service people, maybe a producer along the way. And all of a sudden they wake up one day and realize they've built a business and they're not entirely sure how to run it. And Wendy and I have have been on that side of it. And when we were on agencies ourselves, we went to various uh, coaching programs and we went through networking events. And what what we realized was there was a lot of good ideas out there, but there were a lot of gaps that need to be filled. So we approached the book the way we have our business and that is to fill gaps and take away excuses. Uh, We have built the book around what we call the Q4i growth platform, which is built on the four pillars of marketing and sales and service and leadership. And each of those have been broken down into four additional impact areas, 16 impact areas. So we take a very systematic approach of, of featuring what those agencies need to be working on to build a successful, profitable, growing business. And we've shared stories and resources and step-by-step instruction of how to move forward and improve the the foundation of their business. Wendy, how can insurance professionals and aspiring entrepreneurs make their business stand out from their competitors and become a top performer in the industry? Well, standing out in your business, really, it has so much to do with having control over the way that you work and understanding your business at a very foundational level so that you know how to make changes, you know what types of changes to make, and you know how those changes are going to resonate with your buyers. And speaking of buyers, knowing your buyers inside and out is really critical to being a top performer because the better that you know your audience, the more prepared you are to create an offering that's meaningful to them. And the more interested they become in what you have to offer and the more interested they are in referring you to others. Kevin, can you tell us more about how individuals' habits determine their results and what are some good habits and perhaps some of those that maybe you should be avoiding that that are needed to create the results individuals desire. Yeah, that's it's so important. And as you quoted at the beginning, we, we say all the time, we don't get to choose our results, we get to choose the habits. The habits that we choose that we that we commit to drive those results. And you know, the, the personality traits of so many business owners and producers in this industry, we, they're, they're, they're quick starts. They, um, you know, are easily distracted. We chase shiny squirrels all over. And in a lot of ways, that tendency serves us very well, but it also gets us distracted. It keeps us from seeing projects um, to completion. And we jump off to, to one random idea or another. And what we have to stop and realize is that the foundational building blocks of a book of business or of an agency, they're really pretty basic. And we need to just step back and, and avoid that temptation to look for the next new idea, the next shiny idea, the next sexy idea, and just embrace the, the core building blocks that have proven successful over time. We, we promote at every role within the organization there's a very small handful of of results that that role needs to drive. And we need to evaluate for every role on your team, what are the two, three, maybe the four results that you have to get from that role? Step back and evaluate what are the behaviors that when the individuals perform those behaviors are gonna drive those results. And then to build the habits around those core behaviors. So I'll give an example for a salesperson. Uh, they need to be on a weekly basis. They need to find success in prospecting, 
with existing clients, with centers of influence, and with their own professional development. And they need to build the habit of blocking out time on a weekly basis to ensure they move forward and find success in each of those areas. It's a different for an account manager or account executive or when you're wearing the owner hat, but we have to be aware of how we have to bring value and build habits around those. In the book, you discuss the importance of removing barriers to reach your potential. Kevin, what's needed in that journey? Well, I think just the recognition of where barriers come from. Uh, and I think, yeah, obviously, there, are, there are, are barriers that are externally imposed, but so many of our barriers we put in our own way. And one of the things we have to do is we, we have to be aware of where the noise and the time and the energy sucks come from. You know, again, because we're so driven and so competitive, we tend to always want to ask that question, what am I not doing that I need to start doing? And that can be the right question, but it, if that's the first question, it's usually going to be the wrong one or at least in the wrong order. We are, we're busy people. Our days are filled. And more often than not, what we have to start off asking is, what am I currently doing that I need to do less of? What am I doing that I need to let somebody else on the team do? Or what am I doing that I need to stop doing? Producers also, they, they have, they, the, one of the great barriers that salespeople and then agencies on the aggregate put on themselves is they pursue the wrong opportunities. They think any opportunity, any new client is a good one. And what we see is that approach causes, you call it a, a barrier, you call it a plateau, but it definitely slows down and sometimes it actually stops the growth. We have to be aware of what it looks like to more strategically and intentionally build individual books of business and the agencies as a whole. The book also talks about the importance of differentiation. Wendy, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, differentiation is one of those things that it comes from all aspects of the business. So it's how you show up in your marketing and your sales conversations and the client experience that you offer and the way that you lead and grow your, you know, your team. So the first step is to have a plan for each of those four areas, as Kevin mentioned, the growth, the, the areas of the growth pillars, um, the marketing, sales, service, and leadership, and having, um, having a, an understanding and a focus around all four of those areas is really what's required to have a robust business that can not only keep up with, but can go on to lead your clients. Um, it's really important to remember that our clients, they are growing and they are increasing in size and sophistication every day. And we need to do that as well. I've never been a fan of watching competitors and then, you know, to see what they're doing and then go along and trying to mimic them and do the same thing that they're doing, trying to outrun them, if you will. Um, I do think that you should have a general idea of how they operate. So to understand their business model. And I think that's a great place to stop is understand what their business model is and then take that information and be sure that you're not playing a me too game with that model. So if, if your competition is a product sales organization, then it's a you know, good opportunity for you to practice your skills for becoming an advisor. And if they're focused on insurance only offerings, then it, you know, it's time for you to expand your skill set into complementary services to insurance. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and Sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. Having a strong team is so critical for any organization. Wendy, how can an agency owners involve their team in the business and get them to think like business owners and also engage them in problem identification and problem, problem solving and also content creation? Yeah, there's so many ways that you can engage your team. And it comes back to the vision and understanding, having that, that robust look at your business model and really understanding what it is, having the, the vision of your company. Um, what is the organization all about? Where is it going? How are you going to get there? Um, and from there, what you do is you tie that information with the individual roles. So Kevin was talking about that earlier, and it comes back in again time and time and time again. So what we need to do is focus on how can those individuals contribute to the organizational goals. 
Um, and a key to this is having an expectation that people will participate. Um, we want people taking ownership of those, you know, of the roles that they have and recognize how those roles make a difference for the company and for the clients. So for example, at Q4i, one of our key principles um, in our culture is that everyone on the team has a voice and is expected to use it. And it takes some coaxing for people to get used to that type of environment if they're not already used to it. Um, but it really makes a significant difference when it starts to happen, because instead of leaders being the ones that are having to do all of the thinking and the delegating all the time, now you've spread that out and people at all levels of the organization start looking around and seeing the opportunities and the gaps and um, you know, are able to bring forward their suggested changes. It's extremely liberating as a leader when you when you get to that point. Yeah. When you do that, it's amazing. You you step back and you just just watch the team blossom and grow. And we've uh, we've had great experience with that on our own team here over the last several months, and it's very satisfying on many levels. Yeah. Kevin, what common pitfalls or challenges do insurance professionals sometimes face when creating long-term value results and a successful business strategy? And what's needed to overcome or mitigate those hurdles or challenges? I think it's the it starts with the way they compete for business in the first place, Lori. Everybody seems to fall into the same trap. They want to show up at renewal. They want to, you know, they beg for a chance to quote. They talk about all of the free stuff, the resources that they make available promise better service. And all of those things are important, but the way we look at it, those are the minimum expectations that a business owner has of their insurance advisor. Uh, we need to step back and embrace the fact that even though we're selling products, what we're really doing with those products is solving problems. And I think if you really want to differentiate and step away and, and overcome some of those pitfalls, you have to embrace your role as a problem solver. As, Wendy alluded to a little bit earlier is in the, the model that we coach around and, and help agencies build, they have to embrace their responsibility to address insurance problems with insurance solutions, but there are also any host of non-insurance problems as we refer to them that need to be addressed with non-insurance solutions. Now, non-insurance solutions is a term that we coined, most of the industry refers to them as value added services but the way they typically get used, that value doesn't get delivered. And we want to put them on the same comparable level of solving problems and making an impact. They can't. Um, well, it has to be built into the sales process. If you show up pitching a product, or, you know, whether it's through marketing, or whether it's your sales approach, what we realize is there are very few buyers out there who are just looking to learn about another product. But when you show up and you start to talk about the problems you're able to solve and you have a sales process that's not focused on just pitching a product right out of the gate, but slowing down to learn who that buyer is in terms of risk management, in terms of benefits, in terms of the HR part of their business. What is it about their current situation that's that's holding them back? Where do they have problems that are having a negative effect on their business? Maybe it's operationally, maybe it's financially, more than likely it's both. But to go through and help that buyer realize that their own business may not be as strong in all the areas that it needs to, that it's having an impact. And now when you come back and you bring those same non-insurance solutions or insurance solutions to address those needs that have now been identified, it's a lot more compelling to the buyer and there's a lot more motivation for them to move forward because now they know you're not recommending the products to benefit yourself, you're recommending the products to benefit them, to address a need and to help them get better results. So once an agency has a strategy in place, how do they then implement and measure it? Well, if it starts off, they have to commit to it. Uh, it, it. It starts actually with the client experience that you're committed to delivering and bringing the type of sales process that I just described that ensures you set that new client up for that type of experience. It's everybody wants to have a, 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 you know, a competitive advantage. And the only real competitive advantage that an agency is going to have that is sustainable over the long term, it's not about a product, it's not about a market, it's not about anything other than how they use those resources, how it is that they work. In terms of measurement, this is another just very consistent failure we see within the industry. Most agencies don't track their numbers. 
their their KPIs, their key performance indicators. And they're, those num- those numbers are so important because they tell the story of where you are and how you got to where you are. And it shines that light on where there's opportunities for, for improvement. They really need to embrace understanding the numbers of their business. So the KPIs, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a moment. But they also need to understand uh, the profile of their book of business. One of the exercises that Wendy and I take agencies through is to profile their book of business. So what we mean by that, Lori, is to take every client they have and list them from the largest revenue down to the smallest. And it's shocking at how unhealthy, from a financial perspective, most books of business are built. If, if For sake of round numbers, if you have 100 clients and you cut it in half, that bottom 50% of your book of business by case count only generates about 7% of revenue. The bottom 25% generates about 2% of revenue. The top five generates about 30. The next 15 below that, another 35%. So Pareto's principle doesn't completely come in, but the top 20% generally drives between 65 and 70% of revenue compared to this bottom book of business that's generating seven. So that's where we create so much service work, so much effort that just isn't going to drive a financial return and it slows you down. And then there are the KPIs, the key performance indicators. Uh, you know, we, we work with agencies all the time to collect their KPIs. And I think in our history, there's one time that anybody had done any collection of KPIs before we introduced the idea to them. And these are things as simple as what's your average revenue per client? What's your average revenue per employee? What's your average revenue per support person? What are the conversion rates through your sales process? What's your close ratio to know how effectively and efficiently you're moving opportunities through the pipeline, taking advantage and creating new clients? You have to know those numbers, pay attention and make adjustments accordingly. But you can't make the adjustments if you never track the numbers. Wendy, what do you hope readers will take away from your book? Well, imposter syndrome is common in any small business, and we want people to feel empowered and to have confidence in how they build and run their business and to be in control of their growth and income. Kevin, any final thoughts to share? No, I I think in addition to to that, um, when when a a business owner or when an agency and advisor is running their business and working with their clients the way they need to we see them as the most important advisor that business owner Mm -hmm. has when an advisor is operating and impacting their clients the way we describe in the book they have an impact on that business strategically they have an impact on it financially they have an impact on it operationally and we even believe because of the connection to employees that happens so often they impact the very emotion of the business uh we just hope what we are offering with our book is that is that guide to how to go out and how to be that advisor that your clients need you to be. This has been so informative. Kevin, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lori, for having thank us. You, I appreciate it. That was Q4 Intelligence founding partner and coach Kevin Trokey and partner Wendy Kniep, who are also co-authors of the book, The Salesperson's Guide to Growing a Business, Lessons from the Benefits and Insurance Industry to Drive Your Growth. For AMBES TV, I'm Lori Chortis. Looking to get the attention of the insurance industry? We have the platforms to do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day, find out more by contacting our Advertising Services Business Development Team at 908-882-1706.